these words of my own Hi there, um, this is the Adipose and welcome to another one of my shader mixer tutorials. Today we're going to be having a little look at the altitude brick. Now in the, the shader mixer, which I've got open over here on the left, there is actually an altitude brick here already. If I just pull this open and um, pull it in. There's an altitude brick here already, but it's rather unpredictable, um, it seems a bit buggy in places, and it's hard to know exactly what it's going to do. So what I've done in the user bricks, which you can download, is I've created two new at, um, altitude bricks. And altitude, if you're not sure, is all to do is, is to do with height. And we've got Addy Altitude Object and Addy Altitude Scene. And I'm going to demonstrate um, how you're going to use these. We've got um, four shapes here, and if I just uh, do a quick uh, medium render, uh, they look like this. They're, com they're completely white. Now we're going to use the altitude bricks to change the colors of these objects based on how high we are up in them. So let's move this to one side, give ourselves some room in the shader mixer. If you don't know how to apply a basic shader, um, then do check out some of the earlier tutorials. Um, I'm going to grab the one called Addy Altitude Object um, first of all. Now this is this, what this basically creates is an alpha map and if you're not sure what an alpha map is um, check out the tutorial on that one too. So we need the Addy Altitude Object either needs to work with a mix brick or a color ramp brick and I'm going to use color ramp to show you very clearly what's going on. Um, Color Ramp brick, brick combines, uh, or Color Ramp 3 combines three colors based on a gradient. And it says input map here. So I'm going to plug my Addy Altitude brick into the Color Ramp. And then I'm going to come out of the Color Ramp into the Diffuse color. And then I'm going to apply that to those four shapes you saw there before. To do that, I need to make sure I have all four shapes selected and that I have all four shapes surfaces selected. You obviously only need to do the shapes that you actually, or, or the surfaces that you want to apply to. I'm going to click apply, and I'm going to render. And what we can see here is, is what we hoped for. And we can see that we've got um, the colors changing based on wh when, it get, when it gets to a certain height in each object and uh, it goes from green to blue to orange. Now if this was a, uh, if I'd done this with a normal mix brick rather than the color ramp, it would just be two colors and where it's currently blue would be the, the transition between those two colors, but I've done it like this to make it clearer. Now supposing we want this, the, the uh, where it take, takes place to be a little lower. Well, we can do that in the altitude brick. So let's have a look here at the Addy altitude. We've got what's height of gradient and we've got size of gradient. So let's bring it down a bit. Let's put it down to say 20, apply and render. And we can see it shifted down a chunk. Now we might actually even, if we wanted to get all the way to the bottom, we might even need to go slightly into minus numbers. But we're not going to do that, but what I do want to do is extend the amount of the shape it takes to change, which I'm going to do in the size of the gradient. So I'm going to pull that up to about 80, which is double the size, render it again. And we can see that it's now taking a, a, big, a far bigger chunk of the shape um, to, uh, to change. So to recap, we've got the Addy Altitude, which is providing an alpha channel, either for a color ramp node or for a uh, for a mix brick, which would be in Math Mix, which I'm then plugging into the diffuse color and then rendering it. But supposing I move these shapes, for example, if I grab the 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 cylinder here and I was to rotate it like this. And let's move it up a little bit. And I was to get this cone, I was just to completely flip it on its head. What do you think is going to happen now with the shader? Well, let me show you. Because the altitude brick is all based always all based on height. If we render this one, we can see that um, it looks exactly the same because the the altitude is going up the shapes and here the whole the whole thing is turned upside down this is because the brick we're using is the altitude 
object shape. That means it's using the height within that object. It doesn't matter which way you point the object, it's all based on the top of that object and the bottom of that object. If we want to base it on the scene, however, we can do that. And to do that, we're going to take out um, the Addy Altitude Object one. I'm just going to disconnect it. And I'm going to bring in the Addy Altitude Scene one. Okay. Let's use um, similar settings. We said height 20, but actually, no, let's stick with the 50. And let's go for the 80. Like we had here, I'm gonna I'm gonna take come out from result, input map into my color ramp, apply this, and render. And this time you can see that everything below this middle part of the whole scene is one color, and everything above it um, is is the other color. So this time, it doesn't matter which way up the shape is, it matters where the shape is in the scene and where that particular part of the shape is in the scene. One last thing. Suppose we wanted the uh, the transition to, to appear right at the top of these shapes here. Now, we could do it by guesswork, and we could just... Um, uh, you know, keep keep changing the numbers until we got it. But supposing this was a huge mountain, we don't want to be keep fiddling all the time to find out where we're going to put it. So to find out quickly, we're going to go use a null, create new null, except which is going to create an invisible object at the bottom. But we can see where it is. And if I bring it up, can you see this small little cross here? Uh, what we can do is note by moving it around what height it's at. So if I wanted the the transition to take place about here. I can look at the Y translate. I can see it's 173. So I can go back to my to my shader mixer now, knowing what height that is in the scene. Change the height of the gradient to 173. Of course, that's because that's so high now. I'm going to need to shrink the size of my gradient. Apply, and we can see now that the the gradient it, the 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 altitude brick has now made the the change in colors take place at the point we wanted it. Okay, a practical example here. Here we've got Michael Four um, already set up and we're going to pretend that um, poor old Michael Four here is slowly turning to stone starting with this this top hand and, and uh, an arm up here. Now if we just replace the uh, the texture of the hand, if I highlight here with the uh, the surface selection tool, it will do both hands, which isn't what we want. We only want one hand um, to be replaced. So this is where our altitude brick is going to come into play. We're going to say any part of M4 which is above about this area here is going to be turning to stone, and every thing that's below is going to remain as it is. So how do we find out uh, how high we, uh, we're going to be changing it from? Well, we can use what's called a null. If we go create new null, um, accept all the default settings, and here it is, appeared here. Select it, parameters, and if we do the Y translate, it'll move up. We can see it here, just kind of coming up between these legs here and all the way up. And what we can do is we can put it roughly the height that we want our trend change to stay change to take place and look at the number over here on the Y translate, which is 168. So we know it's going to be roughly around that number that we want um, this stone to take change to take place. So let's go back to uh, the normal camera and just do a quick render to show you that we're stuck with a, a normal. So there he is. Let's move that to one side now. Go into the shader mixer. Move the screen over so we can see. And we need to make sure that Michael is selected, and we need to make sure that the uh, the skin we're going to work on is selected, which at the moment is going to be the forearm. Into the shader mixer, file from scene material. So that's going to grab what is going on with his skin right now. And we've got what we can see is the the standard two surface bricks here, which we're not going to touch this time. We've got an image brick. And if we open up image here, we can see it's limbs, which is his texture. And then we've got the tiler, which is um, uh, controlling how many times the texture is repeated, but in this case, it's once. 
So we're going to be making a mix of two Im of, of two images. So we're going to need um, a mix brick, which is going to be set to color. And I got the mix brick from the math section here. I've set that to color. The uh, existing texture is going to be going into the base. The layer is going to be my new texture, and I'm going to go. I'm going to grab another image block out of patterns. I'm going to go into that image. I'm going to browse. Oh, that came up quicker than I expected there. I'm going to browse and I'm going to grab a, um, a kind of metally stony texture. You can change this texture later if, 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 uh, if you wanted to. That's going to go into my layer. And then my altitude brick is going to control the alpha. And I'm going to use the altitude scene object um, because I want, I want it depending on how high that actual part of Michael is in the scene. It's not actually dependent on which part of him it is. So how does this work? We grab the result, the one that I've labelled result, and go straight into the alpha. We look at the height of the gradient, and what do we say it was? It was about 160, wasn't it? So let's try 160. Let's make sure we've got this one right. We've got uh, the existing texture going into the base, we've got the new texture going into the layer, we've got the Addy Altitude brick controlling the alpha with the height set, and then we need to come out of this mix brick into the diffuse um, colour over here. We need to apply it, just make sure Michael's still selected and the forearm's still selected. I'm going to click Apply, and let's render and see what we've got. And we can see his arm is slowly t turning to uh, to this kind of concrete um, as we go up. And the hand hasn't done yet because the hand we haven't actually applied it to the hand. But I think we'll move the texture up just a little bit higher. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to change that to let's say 165. And we've also got this size of gradient one, which it, which says over how bigger period it will actually make the transition from one to the other. And let's make that just slightly smaller, 35. And I'm going to apply that again. And I'm going to apply it to the hand as well, because I happen to know that they use the same trans maps. And there we go. We can see his hand now. Um, is turning into this concrete metal, um, slowly transitioning over the arm, and by the time we get to the hand, the altitude brick is fully taken care of it. But very importantly, if we look down at the low hand, it hasn't been touched. Although it's the same texture, it's the same surface, because it's uh, the altitude brick is controlling it, it hasn't changed. And just to conclude, um, I've added in a, uh, a background here, a touch of depth of field, um, some, some higher quality lighting, and done a slightly longer render. Um, I probably need to increase the, um, the quality of the uh, Uber environment I used. But you, you get the point. You can see that uh, the, the altitude shader having a clear impact on his arm here, looking very similar to the background behind it. Um, we can see that this guy is effectively turning to stone with no extra tools in there other than um, the shader mixer. Well, I hope you found that useful, um, an introduction to the, the altitude bricks um, in the uh, shader mixer pack, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.